When you've attained a certain level of success, whether in business or in politics, you'd want to be driven around in luxurious comfort. In this country, nothing spells status symbol better than a Toyota Alphard. Don't believe me? Ask any Pogo manager. In today's video, we get to tour the Toyota Alphard, then after which we'll take it out for a short drive within the Toyota Valenzuela complex. Hopefully, I can rope in the Toyota Valenzuela driver so that he can drive us around while we experience that luxurious backseat. Let's do this! Hello guys, I'm Reagan and we are back here at Toyota Valenzuela this time around to take a look at the top dog of Toyota Luxury. Special thanks to Toyota Valenzuela for giving me this opportunity to sample this luxurious van. If you have a need for any Toyota vehicle, you may head on down to Toyota Valenzuela and check out their entire lineup. Or you may make use of their state-of-the-art facilities to take care of your Toyota baby. The Toyota Alphard was born in 2002 and was meant to be a luxurious van from the very beginning. It held on to the title as the most luxurious Toyota vehicle you can buy all the way until 2019 when Lexus launched its own Lexus LM. The thing is, since that's a Lexus, so technically the Toyota Alphard still holds on to the title as the most luxurious Toyota vehicle. And well, the LM is based off the Toyota Alphard as well, so there you go. Now, we only get one variant of the Toyota Alphard in the country because it doesn't make any sense to bring in the sportier Velfire because of the steep asking price of this Toyota Alphard. How steep, you ask me? Well, this baby right here retails for 3,910,000 Philippine pesos. You need to pony up another 15,000 Philippine pesos more if you want it in this pearl white color, which seems to be the favorite amongst Alphard buyers. Now, we all know, guys, that the Toyota High A Super Grandia Elite retails for only 2,998,000 Philippine pesos, and it also offers quite a luxurious option. So let's see what that added dough will get you in the Toyota Alphard. If the Super Grandia Elite's front grille tells everybody that a VIP has arrived, well, then the Toyota Alphard, it's fit for a king. You don't get a pedestrian Toyota badge up front. Rather, you get a stylized alpha symbol that tells everybody who's top dog. You get a ton of chrome in your front grille that would dazzle the masses that are waiting at the curbside of a hotel casino. Your headlight units here are futuristic looking and they are a full LED headlights and you also have an LED turn signal here that's sequential in nature so that they would dance every time you take a turn. The Toyota Alphard also has these sharp geometric lines on its front bumper and overall it comes together to form a look that exudes strength, opulence, and road presence. The side profile of the Toyota Alphard makes use of a play of lines and angles to break off that boxy silhouette and boy did it succeed. The Alphard has this nice broken off B-pillar here that gives off a visual illusion that the van is actually smaller than it is but it's really not. This broken off B-pillar also gives off that look of a floating roof design here that makes the Alphard look longer and sleeker than it actually is. You get power sliding doors on both sides and when you open the power sliding door, you could see that the floorboard is quite low to the ground so that should make getting in and out of this van pretty easy. For your wheels and tires, you've got 18-inch wheels that are in a nice diamond cut design there and these wheels are wrapped in 23550 R18 tires. Behind these uh, wheels, you'll find four-wheel ventilated disc brakes which should make uh, braking and stopping quite easy for this behemoth. Ground clearance comes in at 160 millimeters, which is pretty low, so keep this behemoth out of flooded streets or rough roads. If the Toyota Alphard's front end is filled with chrome, well, then the rear end will not be left behind. Over here, you've got a large center chrome strip here with a Toyota logo this time around right there in the center. Flanking this uh, large center chrome strip here, you've got a beautifully designed LED taillights over here. Now, the Toyota Alphard has a semi-power operated liftgate, unlike the fully manual liftgate that can be found in the Super Grandia Elite. I say it's uh, semi-power operated because to open it, it's pretty much manual. So you just have to pull it up like that. 
but if you want to close it, well, you just have to touch this button right here and the lift gate would automatically close by itself. Now, as you can see with the lift gate open and the third row seats up, you have practically no trunk capacity inside the Toyota Alphard. This baby is still primarily a people mover, so you really have to choose whether you're going to accommodate people in the third row or your luggage. It's really that simple, pretty much like the Super Grandia Elite guys. Now, in order to stow the third row away, it stows away similar to the way a Toyota Fortuner or a Toyota Innova's third row will uh, stow away. And that means it folds over to the side rather than folds flat into the floor. If you fold it to the side, guys, then you'll free up some uh, space to accommodate your luggage. But I really don't know why Toyota couldn't design, well, a third row seat that folds flat in the, into the floor, pretty much like any other manufacturer out there. If they do that, then you would be able to maximize the trunk capacity of your Toyota Alphard. But as it is, guys, well, it just folds to the side. The third row just folds to the side, and that should be able to accommodate maybe two to three pieces of your luggage. The Toyota Alphard makes use of a silky V6 petrol engine because of its refinement. This baby right here is a 3.5 liter V6 petrol engine that's good for 296 horses and 361 newton meters of torque. It's also mated to the newer 8-speed automatic transmission which should help a little bit when it comes to fuel economy. Now given the heavy body of the Alphard plus the powerful motor, you could expect that fuel economy will be on the dismal side and you will be right. Quoted figures for the city comes in at around 5 kilometers per liter and highway fuel economy comes in at 13 kilometers per liter. But then again, if you can afford the Toyota Alphard, who cares about fuel economy anyway? Alright guys, so we're now in the driver's seat of the Toyota Alphard and while this is not the best seats in the house, well, somebody still has to drive this thing, yeah? Anyway guys, luckily Toyota has made sure that the driver and the front passenger would have enough luxury amenities and creature comforts to make it quite a comfortable and luxurious ride up front. I'm going to spend a little bit more time on describing the seats to you guys because these seats are really one of a kind, at least, well, for a Toyota. I mean, wow, or any other brand that's not really, well, a luxury brand. The driver and front passenger seats are finished in cream leather, and these seats are actually ventilated with heating and cooling features, which is an awesome feature when it comes to a tropical country like the Philippines. Now, both seats are power-assisted, and I must say, guys, that, well, the leather quality that they use in the seats of the Alphard, well, at least for all the seats of the Alphard, are so plush that it makes the leather that's used in the Toyota Camry seem a little bit on the pedestrian side. Now, I mentioned that these are power adjustable seats, but the front passenger seat gets an additional, well, luxury feature. The front passenger seat also has a powered legress, an Ottoman, guys. So this baby is pretty much uh, like a lazy boy that's straight out from your cozy living room. I mean, how cool can you get, right? Now, the driver's seat doesn't get that feature, of course, because you have to focus on driving. And while you're focused on driving, you're going to take a look at your steering wheel. And you can see that you've got nice black leather wrapping your steering wheel. And you also have some nice wood trim here. Now, the wood trim seems to be, well, Toyota's uh, interpretation of what luxury should be like inside the cabin. You get a splash of uh, wood trim all over your cockpit. You've got a wood trim right here on your dashboard. Some more wood trim here in the shifting area in the center console area. And you also have a wood trim right here on your gear shifter. So we also saw this in the Super Grandia Elite. So yes, it really seems like this is how Toyota would, you know, would spell opulence and luxury, at least in their book. Now, when you go over to your instrument gauges, you take a little bit of a step back, especially when it comes to tech here, guys. Now, the instrument gauges are fully analog. You got an analog tack and an analog speedometer and a little bit of a multi-information display in the middle. At least it's colored. And this uh, information display will show you your vital stats. Now, for a, well, for a 4 million peso car, guys, I mean, uh, these are really, well, clear and legible, but I would like to see, you know, a fancier option, something like, you know, the gauges that you could see, let's say, in a Lexus. But, well, we don't really get that here. Now, from your instrument gauges, you move on to your infotainment system. And the infotainment system is a little bit on the tiny side. It's a 7-inch touchscreen infotainment system that looks eerily like some of the touchscreen systems. It can be found in the lower price Toyota variants. 
I mean, this baby gained Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is a big plus, guys. But yeah, the infotainment uh, system, the screen itself, it looks a little bit too aftermarket for me. I mean, especially when you're looking at a van that's almost at 4 million pesos. Now, another huge miss as well in the Toyota Alphard is the fact that this behemoth doesn't sport a backup camera. You heard it, guys. At nearly 4 million pesos, the Toyota Alphard does not have a rear view camera. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it right there, Reagan. You're wrong right there. You see, the Toyota Alphard at nearly 4 million pesos has a rear view camera, and you didn't really read through the spec sheet to determine or discover where it really is. The rear view camera can be spotted not in your usual infotainment screen, but rather on the rear view mirror itself. Check this out. Check it out, check it out. You see that? Yeah, when you, when you toggle this little switch here at the bottom part, how do we do that? There. So if you look at it that way, you see that the rear view mirror is just a rear view mirror, but when you toggle the switch here, boom, it shows you an image, a camera image of the rear end of your Alphard. So it mounted a little bit high though, but still you've got a rear view camera. So yeah. I'm telling you, Reagan, you're wrong there. The Alphard at nearly 4 million pesos has a rear view camera. Woohoo! Anyway, back to you. Now, from your infotainment system, you also have a fully automatic climate control system here. And luckily, guys, well, you also have an electronic parking brake with an auto brake hold feature, something that is a welcome addition inside a luxury van. Now, you also have a good addition here, guys, because the Toyota Alphard now sports Toyota Safety Sense uh, suite of uh, safety goodies, guys. We first saw that in the Super Grandia Elite, and now the Toyota Alphard also has it. Now, this uh, Toyota Safety Sense also has, well, adaptive cruise control. You have pre-collision uh, alert system. You also have an auto high beam and a lane departure alert uh, warning system. So that should make, well, uh, the drive of the Toyota Alphard a lot safer than before. Now, you also have here, guys, a little sunroof. Well, I don't want to call it a sunroof. This is more like a moonroof because this is a manual operated moonroof. And to open the glass, you also have to, well, pop it open manually, and uh, it's not really power. The thing is, there's a second sunroof towards the passenger area, and that sunroof is fully power, fully automated, guys. So, well, it's uh, fully automatic where it matters the most, and that's where normally the boss would be sitting. Now, speaking of the boss, guys, let's head on to the back seat and see what it feels like to be the boss inside the Toyota Alphard. Well guys, we're now in the lap of luxury. <laughs> Sitting here guys, now I know why my wife wants to buy a Toyota Alphard. Thing is, it's a little bit out of my price range. <laughs> anyway, the, the second row of the Toyota Alphard sports a pair of luxurious captain seats guys. Now we've first seen these captain seats in the Toyota hi -A Super Grandia Elite, but man, the leather that they use in these babies, wow, it's head and shoulders taller and higher than the ones found in the Super Grandia Elite. Now, these uh, captain seats also have a power adjustable features and both of them both have power Ottoman uh, leg rest as well. Now, to add more to that luxurious feel right here in the second row, you've got privacy shades here in the window to keep the riffraff out. You also have mood lights here in the ceiling and you have a large sunroof here so that you could stare out at the stars while you're plotting your next business acquisition. Now, the man of the house and the boss of, well, this Alphard wouldn't want to rely on the driver when it comes to adjusting his own climate control system because, well, you've got your own set of controls right here to adjust your climate control here at the back. Now, to round out the whole luxurious feel of the second row, you've got your own AC vents here and you also have your own, well, LED lights for reading here and you also have a nano air purification system that's found over here to the side. Wow, this is really awesome, guys. I mean, the amount of legroom that I have here, I don't, I don't even have to discuss with you the, the legroom because you could see, oh, look, you could see. Wow, this is an awesome amount of legroom right here and my headroom as well. Well, who cares about headroom? I'm just gonna recline this, uh, 
this baby, this captain's seat here and be super comfortable. <laughs> oh, by the way, I forgot to mention guys, in the middle of the two captain seats, well, you also have your uh, tray table here in the middle that also has some wood grain finish. This is where you'd normally park, well, your champagne glasses. Please don't use any plastic cups, guys, because that would totally ruin the vibe while you're cruising down in your Toyota Alphard. Now, let's try out the third row and see if it feels as good as well the second row seats. Hmm. Okay, so there's a table here. Oh, yeah, that's the good thing because this baby, it's quite easy to adjust. There's a lever here to the side and you just hit that and woo! <laughs> now you can access the third row. All right, I'm stuck. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. So while I'm seated here in the third row, you'd think that this place would be cramped, especially since the master has his, well, captain seats reclining a little bit more and he has a ton of legroom up there up front. But no, that's not the case here, guys. I got a good amount of legroom here. My knee would take around five inches more before it touches the seat back of the captain seats here. And it's quite spacious. Here in the third row, guys, I mean, wow. This is something that you don't really expect, especially since you've got really bulky seats up there up front. But yes, the people in the third row won't feel too short change while they're sitting here. This actually feels like, well, the regular bench type seats that are found in the second row of, let's say, a crossover or an SUV. I mean, it's really that good, guys. You got a couple of cup holders here on my right side and a single cup holder over there. And you also have privacy shades right here in the third row just in case you know you don't want the riffraff outside to see that you're snoring in the third row of the Toyota Alphard. Now guys, as much as this is quite a comfortable place to stay in, I'd rather take this out now for a drive. Let's go over to the driver's seat and take this Alphard out for a short spin around the Toyota Valenzuela complex and see how it feels like to pilot a Toyota Alphard. Alright guys, so we're now behind the wheel of the Toyota Alphard and given the hefty price tag of this baby, well, we will just keep the drive impression within the Toyota Valenzuela complex. Now, since uh, this is a van guys, a Toyota Alphard is a minivan and I would think that it would drive like a van. And at first, before driving this thing, I thought that it would drive like a van, which means that it would be heavy, cumbersome, and quite unwieldy to, to maneuver. But that's not really the case here, guys, because as I'm driving this around in Toyota Valenzuela, well, this Alphard feels like more a cross, like a crossover rather than an SUV. And that's actually quite weird. I guess it's owing to the fact that, well, you've got a light but nicely weighted steering wheel. The steering wheel has a good amount of feedback, well, despite just you know, going around in parking lot speeds here in the Toyota Valenzuela complex. But yeah, it's quite light and quite easy to maneuver. Now, I also like the fact that the Toyota Alphard has a very slim profile, guys. So looking at it from here, it doesn't feel so large and cumbersome. It feels quite easy to pilot, to be honest. Wow. <laughs> Now I'm going through some maneuvers here, going down their parking ramp. And despite, yes, the size of this van, well, it doesn't feel so difficult to go around in uh, tight roads and tight like uh, parking areas like what we have here in the Toyota Valenzuela complex. This baby is quite easy to drive. Wow, I am quite surprised with this uh, Alphard. It's a bit of a revelation, guys. It's very nimble for a van. It's super nimble. See, I'm going through some S's here. It's quite easy. You know, the handling is quite good. And since this is a unibody uh, frame, it's not really a pickup based van. Well, it handles like a dream. Well, at least when it comes to van standards. <laughs> it handles like a dream. It handles more like a crossover, in fact. That's actually pretty good. I also like the delivery of the power of this Alphard. The V6 uh, petrol engine that we have here is quite silky smooth and quite linear. Alright, we're going to a tight spot here and as long as you mind the fact that this is a longer vehicle than you know, small crossovers or sedans, you won't have any problems when it comes to piloting this thing. Yeah. Now let's give it a shot going up a parking ramp. It's going to be a little bit dark though because I'm now shooting this after work hours here in Toyota Valenzuela and they're really kind enough 
to let me do this drive impression even if it's already after work hours. The thing is, I don't really have any lights on, so I just have to make do with the headlights and the map lights here in front. As I was saying guys, alright, power delivery, going up this incline, the V6 engine of this uh, Alfarid delivers and delivers very well. It has a smooth linear power delivery that you could expect from a naturally aspirated V6 engine. Wow, let's give it another try. Let's go up another ramp. Let's go. See, it has absolutely zero issues when it comes to going up a parking ramp garage. Wow, yeah. And coupled with this nicely weighted steering wheel here, wow, you've got a really good driving machine in the Toyota Alphard. I mean guys, you're paying almost 4 million pesos for this baby. So there must be zero compromises when it comes to driving performance. And in that regard guys, well this Toyota Alphard truly delivers. Now while I'm thoroughly enjoying driving this baby around in the Toyota Valenzuela complex, well this is really not the best seats in the house. And luckily I was able to rope in Vincent, our trusty Toyota Valenzuela driver Vincent, to pilot this baby while I savor the second row captain's chairs over at the back. So now let's switch over to the back seat of the Toyota Alphard. Let's go Vincent, where are you? <laughs> I'm going to pick Vincent up right now. <laughs> Alright guys, so we're now seated here at the captain seats of the Toyota Alphard and I mentioned a while ago that I'll be driven around by Vincent but I told you guys also that this is already after work hours here at Toyota Valenzuela so we don't really have Vincent now. Instead, I was, I was fortunate enough guys to have the services of our good friend Carlo from Toyota Valenzuela who's now doing the driving duties for me. So thank you so much Carlo for helping me out here. Welcome sir, welcome. Alright, so yeah, so we're driving around the Toyota Valenzuela complex. You could really see that this is where your 4 million pesos went, guys. I mean, wow. We first encountered these seats in the Super Grandia Elite, but man, the quality of the leather here, even if I'm sitting on leather that's been wrapped in plastic, as you could see, man, the softness of these seats, the plushness levels, it is really way up there. And the fact that the Toyota Alphard is a unibody van versus, well, uh, more utility construction that can be found in the Super Grandia Elite. Well, guys, I could tell you immediately that the Toyota Alphard has loads better suspension, loads better NVH levels, and you could really feel like you're the king when you're being transported around in the captain seats of your Toyota Alphard. I mean, this is crazy delicious, guys. <laughs> I mean, yeah, these seats are truly the best seats in the house and I am so fortunate to have this opportunity to truly experience this, being at the back seat, at the second row seats of the Toyota Alphard. All thanks to Toyota Valenzuela and our good friend Carlo who's now taking the driver's seat right there in front. <laughs> so guys, yeah, the back seats of the Toyota Alphard, best seats in the house. Four million pesos, truly worth it. While there are more luxurious options out there in the market, it seems that the Toyota Alphard is truly the vehicle you get driven in if you're one of the old rich. Pogo managers aside, it's the car that tells everybody that you've arrived without being too loud or ostentatious. So is it worth the added premium over a similarly capable Super Grandia Elite? Well guys, if you prioritize luxury and refinement above all and six seats are enough for you, why yes, the Toyota Alphard is a worthy vehicle over the Super Grandia Elite. It's a car that tells everybody you're loaded without even trying. No wonder it's a favorite family vehicle amongst the moneyed elite and local politicians. Once again, thank you guys for watching one of my car reviews. If you like this review, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button as well. I promise you guys I'll make it worth your while if you subscribe to Reagan's Rides. I'm Reagan, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.